So now we have the ability to start the game. It creates the 3, 2, 1 countdown. Now once it gets to zero, it enables the button, our users then free to press the button as many times as they can while the time remaining counter decreases and then that hits zero. Once it does, the button is now disabled and the game has finished. We're now going to set up the ability to once the game has finished, it's going to then trigger a delayed action to push us to our end game view. Within our end game view, we're going to have various options for then allow our user to do something, whether it's share the score or then completely play the game all over again. But before we can get to all those possibilities, we need to make sure that we have the ability to delay an action to then trigger to push us to a third view. Now, this third view we're going to switch to, we don't have, well, basically, we don't want the user to have the ability to trigger that. We want the game to trigger it itself. So, to do all this, we first need to create this third view. Now, we're not going to design the interface in this lecture, we'll design it in the next lecture. We're just going to create it to make sure it's there to enable our application to switch to it. So, within our main.storyboard, what we're going to do now then is add in a third view. Just like how we added in our second view, we scroll to the top of our objects list and drag and drop this in. There we go. So I'll zoom out a little bit so we can clearly see all three of them together. Now the difference with this one is our second view, uh, we're able to get to that because we linked it with our start game button. This one, we're not going to be doing the same thing. We're not going to be able to get to it by linking to it to an object. We want our application to manually switch to it. Now, this causes one of many problems. Well, the first one is our application or our project throws up an error. And that's simply saying because there's no way our application can get to it. Now, an easy way to solve that is, again, linking up it to an object that we can press and get to it. But we don't really want to do that. We have to do this manually. We have to switch to it by code. And to get rid of this error to making our application know that it is reachable is we need to give it a storyboard ID or an identifier. So we're doing this by clicking on the files owner of it and go into the identity inspector. Now, I'll bring this down now so you can see. We need to give it a storyboard ID. And the ID I'm going to give it is simply called end game. Now make sure that whatever storyboard ID that you give it, if you do place in a capital or use or lowercase or, or uppercase, make sure that when you come to coding it and when we do reference this storyboard ID, that you get it case perfect. So you can see I've got the uppercase G within it. I need to make sure that I have an uppercase G within my code. Now by adding that in, we now have got rid of that warning. Perfect. It's exactly what we want to do. Now all I need to do is create a brand new class for it so we can control it or just simply reference it in general. So just like how we created the game view controller dot swift for our second view, we need to do the same um, kind of um, process now for our end game view. So we go to right click our project, go to new file and select Coco touch class and pressed next. And in here, and we can simply type in end view controller just like that and create that within our project i'll drag and drop it underneath our game view controller and then jump back into our main dot storyboard now click on the files owner and then go to class here and add this in so add in our end view controller press enter so it's now linked up to it perfect that class is now linked up to this view so when we come to switch into this third view when the game ends we all you simply need to do is reference the class file and the storyboard id and that's simply all we need to do now how this works is again pretty much how we've triggered all of the timers so the two timers we got our start game timer and our kind of you know play game timer as you may call it uh, we triggered those with timers and we can do the exact same thing with how we switch to our third view the only difference is we don't need to control this new timer meaning we don't need to create it as a variable we don't need to create any ints to control it we just need to create a basic timer tell it that it doesn't need to repeat it only needs to trigger itself within a certain amount of time so to do this we're going to jump into our game view controller dot swift and all the way at the end when our game officially reaches zero and it invalidates that timer 
then disables that button, the game has now officially ended at this point. Within this, we're going to create a timer that is going to trigger one more function statement that we're now going to create, which switches to our third view. So just down below, I'm going to space it out so we've got a load of room so you can see exactly what we're doing. We're going to create one more function. This will be the last one that we're going to be creating in this class. And I'm simply going to call it end, place two brackets there in our parentheses, and press enter. When we call upon this function, it's going to switch us to our third view. That's all it's going to do. So we need to create a variable. Now, because we're creating a variable within inside of a function, we don't call them variables. We call them uh, constants, and we reference them by typing in let. And we're going to shorten this down to VC, which is short for view controller. And we're going to equal this to a UI storyboard, which is just down here. And within this, we do our bracket, and we add in the name and the bundle. Now, the name and the bundle is how we kind of reference and pick out a specific view within our storyboard. For example, the name of our storyboard file is called main.storyboard. So in the string here, we do our two quotation marks here, and the name of our storyboard, which is main. Now, in our main, again, dot .storyboard, we have three individual view controllers. So by giving that third view controller a storyboard ID, which we call the end game, we can now single out that view controller and tell it that's the one we want to switch to. So in the bundle here, we just type in nil, and after that bracket, we do dot instant view controller, the one we've identified within the brackets, and the identifier, again, is what we equal it to, which is end game. So we place in our two quotation marks, end game. Remember, it is case sensitive. If you've placed an uppercase within it, make sure you got it in. And at the end of that bracket there, we do as, exclamation mark, the name of the class we created for it, which in our case is end view controller, which you just placed it on the new line there. I'll space this out a little bit. There we go. So you can see it all on one line. There we go. Perfect. And then, underneath that, all we need to then do is then present it to our user. So we do self.present, which is all the way at the bottom here. And in the first highlighted section here, we're placing the name of the kind of uh, variable or constant that we created, which we shortened it down to VC. In animated, we're going to select false. We don't want an animation on it. We just want it to switch to it quite simple uh, because by default, it gives us that slide up or either way. We don't want to use an animation on it. It's going to switch straight to it and we won't even notice that it just happened. It's in the blink of a eye. And in completion, we're going to do nil and that with a bracket. There we go. So we created this function, this end function, which is going to uh, switch to our um, third view that we created within our storyboard because we linked it to our end game identifier within our end view controller. But again, we need to trigger this function. And how we trigger it is, like I said before, we're going to use it on a timer. Now, we don't need to create, again, like I said before, an int or a variable for the timer itself because we're not controlling it. We're not repeating it. We don't need to, uh, again, invalidate it. So we can just create a basic timer no questions asked. So we type in timer and we do dot scheduled timer again with the time interval, the selector, user info, the repeats, exactly the same how we did before. The only difference is we're not referencing a timer that we created as a variable. And in the time interval here is when we want it to trigger. So we're basically saying, for example, if I put five, that means within five seconds, it's then going to trigger the function that we add within it. Now, five seconds is uh, it's quite a long time once we finish the game. So let's go. Let's go for two seconds. It's enough for our user to see the game has ended. We can't type anymore. They've seen their score, and as they've seen all that information, it then switches to the third view. Target. We're going to do self. Uh, the selector. We do hash uh, selector as we normally do there. And in the highlight section here, we do the name of the view that we're in, which is game view controller dot end, which is the uh, function we created down below we want it to go to. Use info, we do nil. And most important, this is really important, repeats, we set to false. Because if we set that to true, every two seconds is going to keep switching us to the third view. And you may be thinking, yeah, but once we're on the third view, 
I mean, we're on it. I mean, it doesn't matter how many times it's going to make us switch to it. It's not the case. It's just going to keep loading the third view over and over and over and over again. And then eventually, you you know, maybe in a few years, I don't know how long it will take, you'll eventually cra- cra- um, crash the application. I say years because, you know, it's it's not a lot of memory that it's loading up. So it could take a while before it fills up all the memory on your phone. But you just never know. Make sure you set it to false so it doesn't, you know, keep loading up the third view. And that's all that happens. Again, that gets um, triggered two seconds after the game has ended, calls upon that function, and switches us to our third view. Now, when we go to test it on the simulator now, how we can know this works is because our third view is completely blank. There is nothing on it whatsoever. So as soon as the game has finished, two seconds we should then have to wait before it switches to a completely white view. So we start game. So it does what it needs to do, counts down, we're going, we're pressing, we're trying to get a higher score, the highest score we've ever had while playing this game, which I believe mine was 25, so I've already beaten it, hit zero, two seconds later, bam, white view. That is exactly what we want. So this white view is going to be our end game view, which in the next lecture, we're going to design the interface for it. We're going to add in all the buttons, get everything set up before then we bring over that score and display it within our end game view, ready to share it by Twitter, email, SMS, all the different, many different ways and how we can, you know, share the content within our application uh, and then give up the ability for our user to restart the game and play again. How cool is that? So you may be thinking, yep, it's only a white view, but this view and the next coming lectures will eventually become our end game screen.